Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Terry. And we're Escaping, Escaping the, the Empty Nest. Nest. So during our planning for our Paris trip, we originally only wanted to go to Normandy. That was like really important for us. And our time was limited in Paris. And a lot of people told us, you can't just do that. We wanted to try to see if we only had a day trip from Paris to Normandy and back, could we do it? So how do we make this happen? Well, there are tours that can take you from Paris to Normandy and back again in the same day. They take about 13 hours and they run between 180 and 250 euros a person. I didn't find any of those tours that I was particularly excited about just because once you factor in the transportation of taking a private van that far, you really didn't get much time in the area. What we decided to do was take an early train there and a late train back, which maximized the time we could have in the area. So when I say early train, I'm talking maybe a 7.30 train. That's what time we, uh, we left. We had to leave our hotel about 6.30, got to the area about 7, got some food in the area, took it on the train, some fresh croissants, which were delicious. And we got to the Normandy about 10 o'clock. And I thought that was you know fairly reasonable. It didn't seem too early. So when we arrived in Bayou, that gave us plenty of time to explore, uh, eat some lunch there, um, explored the Notre Dame Cathedral in Bayou, and also did the Normandy Museum. Yeah, which wasn't a great museum. I guess I'm glad we did it, but it, it didn't offer very much. And honestly, if we had to do it all over again, I pro it's, not, it's not something I would go out of my way to do again. Uh, what I would probably recommend somebody do is see the Bayou Tapestry instead mm -hmm. and see something outside of the Normandy war history stuff. So we had booked a tour with Overlord Tours and they offered half day tours and you could choose the morning or you could choose the afternoon. So we chose the one o'clock in the afternoon tour. Uh, it met in the center of town, was really easy to find yeah. and we went on our way. We got lucky that there were only four people in our tour, which means there was plenty of room in the van. Uh, I, we saw on their website, it could be as many as 16 people you're sharing the tour with. But that probably depends on whether you're going during high season or peak season. We were there in mid-May, so it probably wasn't as busy as it would be during the summer. The first place that we stopped was Longemer Battery. And it was a place that wasn't very heavily bombarded by the Allied forces. It wasn't as important an area, but it's between Gold and Omaha Beach. It was really cool to see that a lot of the gunnery up there was still fully intact. Um, you could walk around them to kind of get inside the barricade where they were and look around. That was pretty neat. Yeah. With as much destruction as there is all along the coastline there, I guess I would, just wasn't expecting to see the guns fully intact. It was it was interesting experience for sure. After we left Longchamere, we went down to Omaha Beach for just a little bit. It wasn't the uh, part of Omaha Beach that was necessarily the, where the most fighting took place, but it was a little short stop before we got to what I could probably consider the number one destination that we really wanted to see was the American Cemetery. And it was very moving. So when we were there before Memorial Day and there was gonna be an event that was gonna go on on Memorial Day there. So we were kind of limited a little bit to the areas that we could actually see. But we started in an area with a large statue. It had two maps on either side of the area that had a large reflecting pool that went down. And then pathways that crisscrossed around the sides of that that took you back to the actual cemetery area where you could view the crosses of the many people who had been buried there. Not everybody that's buried there actually died on Omaha Beach, but their families could have them buried with their uh, compatriots if they would like. It, it was very moving. You know, we've been to Arlington National Cemetery, and of course that's moving too. To see both of them within a couple of years of each other, uh, felt like we were making a tribute to the people who paid the ultimate sacrifice for, for, for our country. The guide gave us a little bit of time that we could wander around on our own before we were gonna go to Charlie Sector on Omaha Beach, which was the area that was the most heavily bombarded and the most of the battle took place there. Um, if you've seen Saving Private Ryan, a lot of the scenes from that was taken from the actual, that area of this, the uh, beach. Of course, our guide gave us plenty of information and he was just always spouting off facts and stories. And this is one of the things about having him there is we could have driven there if we could have even found it on our own and not got nearly as much information as having experienced guide with us. So 
I was thinking halfway through the tour, I was like, boy, I'm glad we didn't try this on our own because that was something we originally thought about doing is just renting a car and, and doing it on our own, but we wouldn't have gotten nearly as much out of it. So from there, uh, after we left the beach, we went up to Point de Hoc, which is at the top of the cliffs. And one thing that struck me almost as soon as we got out of the car is all these craters all the way around. And our guide explained that the craters obviously came from the shelling from the battleships. But the reason why most of the craters were behind the bunkers is they had to find their range. They could not get short with their range, so they had to aim long and then bring it back in. Obviously, if they had aimed too short, they would have been shelling their own men on the beach. So eventually they found their range and they found the, uh, the, the bunkers. But um, there are some enormous craters uh, still beyond where the German bunkers were. So did we get to see everything that we wanted to see while we were in Normandy? They picked kind of the best of the best World War II memorial spots, and we felt like we got a great overview of what happened that day. All that and a, a tour that probably lasted maybe five hours and was fairly affordable. So yeah, we I think we definitely got what we paid for, and I'd recommend this tour group to anybody who doesn't have much time, and they have full day tours too, but if you don't have a lot of time and you want to get a great overview of the area, the half day tour from Overlord is a great option. And at the end of the tour, the driver gave us an option. He could drop us back off in downtown Bayou if we wanted to get dinner, and or he could drop us back off at the train station, which we decided to go ahead and get dropped off back at the train station. There was a little cafe there that we could eat dinner with before we caught the train back to Paris. Yeah, now if you do that, just the cafe there is cash only, so make sure you get some cash on you. So we took the 7.30 train back to Paris and arrived around 10 o'clock, maybe a few minutes after, and we decided we had enough energy when we got in. We went to the Eiffel Tower and saw the Twinkle show, the light show that they put on at the top of every hour after it turns dark. We saw that at 11. And then we uh, went to uh, Amarino for ice cream. Again. And, again. <laughs> and then and there was a line there, even though they were close to closing. And that's, that's a good sign of a good gelato shop is if there's a line right before closing, you know you're in the right place. We highly recommend that if you are just having one day to go up to Bayou and to go to Normandy, that you do it with a tour guide. I think our day would have been pretty well wasted uh, if we hadn't had anything that was kind of directed and focused in our guiding us through Normandy. So have you ever done a day trip to Normandy and what was your experience? If you have any comments or questions, we answer every comment that is put down below. If you've got any good information out of this video, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And we will be happy to share the rest of our journey with you through Europe as we are preparing to leave Paris and go on to Strasbourg. We're really glad you joined us today. Thanks for watching and bye for now. now.